Hey everyone, this is Andy here and this video I actually just want to showcase this amazing converted Lehman Russ I've just been sent by Mr. Barry Watkins. It's actually my next project for Patreon so I'm going to do all the painting on there if you fancy following that tutorial but I thought this conversion is too good not to show on YouTube and I'm going to show you how I do the basing as well so there is a tutorial element in this video but mostly I just felt I need to show you how good and how cool this model is. If you haven't already seen it go and check out Barry's Instagram there is some of the most amazing conversions and reposes on there. You can see he's working on this Dante at the moment one of my favorite characters and the the green stuff works just exquisite I love looking at conversions like this. I'm not the best or worst at converting, uh, but my sculpting skills aren't really there. So I really admire his work here. We actually have done workshops with him. So if you fancy learning from him how to do that, then keep an eye out on his socials and the cuttle paint ones too. But let's take a closer look at this Lehman Russ that he's just sent me. So you can see it's been reposed to follow that piece of artwork and every little detail is just amazingly well done. How the hair is done is just so nice. I'm going to have a little closer look at that now. Every strand of hair on the fur or his face is just really well defined, really clean. And that's going to be so easy for me to paint. You can see on the armor joints that he's changed, like the elbow here, it's really smooth. I think he's mixed that with some milliput, so it's not just pure green stuff, which will make it a bit nicer for the armor plates. But yeah, there's a lot of work on this. You can see the face is almost completely redone with a nice full beard, the hairy pose. But yeah, all that fur is just so clean and it matches the original sculpt really, really well. That little foot detail would have been really hard for the look at it from me, just to repose the shape of the foot. So. Yeah, fair play. This is just fantastic. And I feel very lucky that I get to paint it. I'm actually going to send it back to Barry uh, as a gift. So I'm going to paint it, which is obviously amazing content for the Patreon page, but I will be giving it back to Barry. You can see in the arm here, that top armor is so clean. And even the little rivet looks uh, super perfect. So yeah, I really admire this. It's quite inspirational. And I was very happy with my Abaddon conversion I did recently, but it's no way near as good as this. My green stuff work was pretty dodgy on that Abaddon. So uh, yeah, I do appreciate having something that's uh, very clean and uh, a much higher standard. So yeah, please check out his Instagram, his other amazing conversions. And if you want to learn from him, there are classes in the UK. I did, however, have to come up with my own basing solution and the base you get with Russ is really nice, but it's a little large, a little cluttered. So I wanted to take the kind of top piece because it's just wonderful, that nice flat rubbled area. And you can see I've filled in the gap with Milliput and I'm going to stick that on a 60 millimeter plinth from Taro Model Maker. And yeah, you can see this kind of fills up a nice bit of space. If I stick it straight down, it's going to be a bit too much of an angle. I've pinned a little hole just to check where he's going to sit. And yeah, I definitely want to use this part of the base because it's a nice flat area. But I think what I need to do is glue it down at a bit of an angle and then fill in the gaps underneath. So I'm going to try and get that top floor section parallel to the plinth and fill everything out underneath. So you can see here I've glued it. I cut a little bit off to get some more of the glue attached. And I needed to drill a new hole for it to sit and make sure that head was centered over the plinth. It was a little uh, to the right and I wanted the head to be dead center. That's not a kind of hard rule, but I think it works uh, in most single figures for sure. My next job is to kind of fill out this big gap and I'm going to start off with lots of large rocks and pieces of rubble. I want a huge variation. So I do use some smashed up stone and concrete mixed in with sand. I'm not going to uh, let you watch me just glue some sand on, but you can see here I've kind of filled all of the main area with sand and rubble. But there's some parts I need a little more accuracy and I need to match the stone. So I'm using Milliput here and this is much better than green stuff because it dries very hard and it's easier to cut and sand and scrape. 
and it's just much better for these kind of hard surfaces like rock or armor. Here I'm using my metal sculpting tool to get a rough shape that matches the rock above. You don't have to worry about doing this perfect and I'm not a great sculptor so you can do this too and the great thing is we can go in with a knife and change it after so I try and match the texture with my sculpting tool but again if it doesn't quite match I can sand it use my knife and uh, tweak it a little bit but yeah we're going to bulk it out with lots of rocks so that's very quick and then where we need the accuracy uh, or we need to mimic a shape then we use some putty. I glued a large flattish rock to the front because I thought it would look nice and match the kind of top surface of here. So I'm going over the top of it and trying to smooth it out uh, with some milliput again. And I'm hoping I can mimic the kind of cracks and that marble texture. And I'll separate the, uh, the top surface with paint as well. So it's just making sure it's uh, smooth to match the top. Once that milliput is dry, I sanded it off and I used a pretty rough grit just to get it flat as quick as I could. And I normally, you know, polish stuff up if it's on a model, but this I don't think it needed to uh, be that smooth. So I just went up to 400 grit. Normally I'd probably go up to something like 8 or 1000 uh, on the grit. So yeah, just trying to get it smooth-ish will do the job. Then I'm going to use my knife to copy these kind of cracks in here. So I start off using the tip of the knife to do kind of random lines. And you can see I'm trying to kind of continue what's going on the top there. This is pretty fun, actually, because it doesn't need to be perfect. And uh, yeah, just a few random lines. Not too many because there isn't that many on the top. So just trying to yeah match that. And once I've cut a kind of line, then I use the side of the knife to widen it, but not too much. Uh, and you just need to go in from both sides so you kind of have a, a soft kind of crack each side. It's very forgiving this and quite easy, but I think the key thing is you definitely want a putty like Milliput because you can sand it and do this kind of thing. So I encourage you to uh, have a go at doing this with your bases. It's actually a lot of fun. I really like it. So there's my final effect after I've scraped it out and you can see it kind of matches up pretty good. I think when there's paint on there, it's going to be awesome. And you can see it's kind of like a part crack down here. Maybe I should add more of these, but I don't know. That's probably enough. I might add a few more random rocks and things like that. I actually did this base at the same time as doing another project. So uh, yeah, watch out for that. But it's quite good to have these two plinths prepared. You know, mixing up millipart might as well do uh, a couple jobs at the same time, I think. And then we just check the fit and see how it looks. And although this is a simple base, I want this to be all about the miniature. So, of course, we could have something more elaborate. But I quite like using that Prospero base and just slimming it down to that 60mm plinth. And, uh, yeah, we've got a good amount of height here. I think a few more large pieces of rubble would look good. So I'll probably glue those down when I paint the base. But yeah, I'm quite happy. Uh, some of you may know how to do this basing, but I do actually get asked how to do little things like this a lot. So hopefully for those of you who have not done a little display base like this, this has been helpful to you. And here you have the finished Russ. I've got them all blue tacked together and uh, it's nice to take a photograph like this. Actually, I really think the green stuff work Barry's done is pretty special. So although I'm going to try and do my best on the painting, it's nice to have a good photo of it and remember all the work that's gone into it. I don't know what it is, but I love seeing the mix of resin and, and putties and sand. And you can just see the kind of adjustments you've made, I guess. I think the original pose for Russ is fantastic and it's really dynamic. And uh, you could say it's actually silly to make a pose more boring, but I love my static poses. It replicates that artwork and for me, I don't know why, I just like to do something a little different that's out of the box. So I really appreciate that Barry sent me this conversion and uh, I'm going to try my best not to mess up the paint job. So <laughs> yeah, obviously uh, I'm going to be sending that back to him. So uh, yeah, I want him to be happy with it. So no dodgy bits I can hide behind the camera, I guess. If you want to follow the painting process, I will be doing that on Patreon starting this week. So after filming this video, I'm going to go get the primer on and get painting. So probably going to get the face done first because, uh, yeah, that's the hardest part always. And I'm really looking forward to doing the armor because it's a very nice 
uh, sculpted armor and uh, I love painting gray so yeah it's a model I'm really looking forward to and uh, when it's finished I'll come back to YouTube and uh, show it off I think. I hope you enjoyed looking at this conversion and hopefully for some of you little basing tips were helpful and yeah leave any comments below and make sure you check out Barry on social media. Right, we'll see you uh, see you soon.